We continue in our Faith in Film series uh, with Gran Torino um, today. Um, and so again, this is not exactly the um, genre of family-friendly movie we've been studying so far, um, but it is a phenomenal movie. Um, and Jesus does ask us to go, right? To go out into the world and to be present as Aiden was talking with the kids. And being out and present means encountering some of the evils and the messiness of the world that we named in our joys and concerns. Um, the violence and the brokenness that comes um, from our opioid epidemic and addiction, um, from gang violence, from, from real evils that we have pledged in our baptismal vows to combat and, and to hold against in faith against the spiritual forces of wickedness. And so part of this is being honest about the roughness that is out there and looking at how we live in a witness of Christ's commandment to love each other and to love each other through and across some pretty strong social divides. The parable that we read first is talking about um, what happens um, when we are called to go work. And if there's anything that we can get hooked on, the script of this movie in the opening scene is how much we are set up and how much they do a good job of setting us up to not like the main character, Walt's family. Um, they, if, I just guess if I had a daughter acting the way that she did at her father's funeral, we would be having, we would be having very strong words that are in the movie. Um, and so there's, there's that gift that you say you're your family, that you love each other, that you're there looking out for the best. Um, but that is very much the son who does not go to do the work. All the words are there, but absolutely nothing is about Walt. Um, it is all about the convenience of what the family themselves want. And so we have from the very beginning that strong disconnect. And this opens um, at Walt's wife's funeral. Um, and so at a time of brokenness and grief, um, we, have, we have this lack of love that is shared and given. And then we have what would be the modern day equivalent of the social divide that Jesus is talking about in his parable with the tax collectors and the harlots. So Walt lives in um, the neighborhood um, that has now um, been affected by gang violence and also um, by the Hmong population coming in and, and living with. And so now we find in a place where there's a social divide and where there's not an expectation for kindness, there's this delicious scene of um, Walt and a Hmong grandmother staring each other down with a stink eye across their porches. And Walt does this you know, spit and she just spits harder and farther than he does and he huffs and goes in his house because he's totally lost the moment. Um, so there are some great moments there, but it's clear like you would never expect family to come from this. And of course we have, as the movie unfolds, what happens is the son who's like, no way, then actually shows up and does the work. And so part of this is how we view the world. Um, we're, we're able to immediately pinpoint those social injustices of hypocrisy. We're ready to immediately hate Walt's family. But are we also ready to immediately see people who say all the wrong things, but actually show up when needed? Um, and so part of this is also one of um, the daughters of one of the Hmong families um, seeing that in Walt and giving him that grace. Um, I do need to give a racial disclaimer in terms of Walt's language. Um, this is scripted, responses to these words are scripted, um, and this daughter is able to give him grace um, through this and through a really awful moment um, where he's um, been brought into the family barbecue as a guest and, and says some awful things to everyone gathered. So it's just, don't try this at home. It doesn't work this way in real life. Like words hurt, there's meaning that is carried. There are divides that are made that make it almost impossible to heal and to reconcile and forgive and move through. And we all have those experiences in our families. Um, but there's also this very Christ-like moment from this Hmong daughter who's able to see through the roughness and to own 
the fact that Walt does show up at some pretty cool and critical points. And so we have our first clip, Barry. And so these moments continue building. Um, and at one point, um, when the gang comes um, to take uh, Tao, um, the gang um, is his cousin. Um, uh, Walt pulls out his, his gun and gets them off the lawn and defends Tao and continues and works with him and gets him a job in construction and is there and these moments of family and unexpected abiding in God's love keep building. Um, and so very much um, our gospel according to John of what it is to abide in God's love. And Walt didn't choose this family, but they kind of chose him. And um, when their needs became evident, he showed up and was present. And so this, this back and forth builds, and as this relationship in this family is developing, um, his relationship with his own biological family is continually deteriorating. And, and we have this dualism that's presented with us of what happens when we say we'll show up but never show up, and what happens when we say we won't show up but then end up do showing up, and the hope and the freedom that comes from that. And so we come to this moment, and this is the final scene. It's um, the roughest because it's a confrontation with a gang. And, and things have escalated um, to the point where the gang has come back um, and reasserted their power and territory by raping Tao's sister. Um, and at this point, Walt is done. Um, 
But what happens is this creative subversive moment where instead of escalating it even further, the man who you couldn't get more escalatory language if you tried um, from Walt um, takes a page from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount when Jesus asks people, when a Roman soldier asks them to carry their pack for one mile to go the second mile, when someone strikes their cheek to turn the other cheek, when someone demands their coat to give their undershirt as well. And this is the kind of thing that happens. Walt's at a point where he's, uh, that's too much of the story. Go watch the movie, it's really good. Um, so we have this escalating and this build and Walt knows what he can give and he gives it. grace with 
the level of language, but I also want us to realize that as offensive as the language is, there are greater evils that are even more offensive that we are called to be witnesses in. As United Methodists, our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And this is the kind of lasting transformation that we're talking about. It's transformation for a grumpy old man who found enough love in his heart and a family in the most unexpected place that he was ready to give up his life for them. Freedom from what he was struggling with and was never able to get over from the war. Transformation and peace that he was finally the right person in the right place at the right time and was treated as such. And then transformation for an entire neighborhood, a family who's given space to be um, everything that they want to set and path for a son who's free to go into sales if he chooses instead of being pulled into a gang, for a daughter who's able to live without fear um, of brokenness of body and spirit and mind. This is the transformation that God calls us to enter into, to go. When God calls us to the vineyard to work, and we say that we're going to go, but we don't show up, there's harm that happens because we weren't there to show a different way or to help build a different way. And that's bad enough, but what's even worse as the church is to then make fun of the good that is done or demean it because it wasn't done in the right name or in the right structure or in the right behavioral code. Here's Walt that I mean, he had his Hail Mary as he died, and there's some great scenes with his priest, but he was not um, a religious man like his wife was, except he was one of the most religious men that there was in this film in terms of how he pursued and how he lived out his faith, even though he said all the wrong things. So how do we give God room to work, and how do we see that, and how do we join with that and how do we find one of those magical kingdom moments where God is able to comfort those who are afflicted and make a way where there is no way, as God did in that really subversive, creative, amazing moment in the way that Walt gave his life? And then also, how do we afflict the comfortable? How do we bring a little bit of suffering into people who need it in order to produce the endurance and the character and the hope that only suffering can bring? Walt might have died in this great, really giving way that abides in God's love, um, but he still got his fun in the end and, and bringing that afflicting the comfortable moment in. Barry, our last clip.
confide in God's love in a way that we are able to call each other friends. May we abide in God's love in a way that the afflicted are comforted and the comfortable are a little bit afflicted.